While having your big bad, loud and proud front and centre of a great horror movie, there's also something to be said for having your villain lurking out of sight and with a sense of mystery and intrigue about them. And in some cases, horror hounds have even seen movies where the killer of a film has been hiding in plain sight. It's just that neither we nor the killer themselves actually realised it. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 horror movie characters who didn't know they were the killer. Number 10, Marie Switchblade Romance. Whether you know it as Switchblade Romance or High Tension, Alexandra Arge's 2003 picture is one that forever splits opinion. After a scorching, unrelenting 70 minutes or so, the flick offers up one of the most shocking twists in modern day horror. Some loved it, others hated it, and it's this twist that's usually the source of the vastly different opinions people have on the movie. Plot-wise, the film centres on Marie and Alex, with the pair staying at Alex's parents' house for the weekend. When a late night ringing of the home's doorbell wakes our main characters from their slumber, the person on the other side of the door is a grim and grimy madman who kills Alex's parents and her her younger brother before taking her hostage in his truck. Marie miraculously manages to sneak into said truck where the pair are locked in as they plan on how they're going to escape this most sticky of situations. Of course, the controversial ending of Switchblade Romance sees it later revealed that Marie has been the one carrying out the murders of the movie, with her being a crazed loon who's obsessively in love with Alex, to the extent that she imagined the film's killer in order to stop anyone else being close to her obsession. Number 9. David Calloway, Hide and Seek From director John Paulson, Hide and Seek follows Robert De Niro's widow, David Calloway, as he and his daughter Emily move to upstate New York following the suicide of David's wife. Once settled in their new home, nine-year-old Emily creates an imaginary friend called Charlie. Like any horror film featuring an imaginary friend, though, things start to take a turn for the sinister pretty quickly, with David concerned over his daughter's mental well-being. When the Calloways' cat gets killed, a play date with a friend of Emily's results in a decimated doll, and a family friend is pushed out of a window to her death. The kicker here, of course, is that Charlie has really been David this entire time, with him suffering from dissociative identity disorder. Making things even more chilling, it's revealed that David's wife didn't actually take her own life, but instead she was murdered by her husband after David caught her cheating on him. After the penny drops for David, he fully embraces the Charlie persona, to the point that he ends up getting himself killed after attempting to add a few more bodies to his kill count. Number 8. Man. Unconscious. Unconscious, also known as Amnesiac in some markets, 2014's Unconscious is the story of Man, Woman, and Audrey. When Man wakes up in a hospital bed, yeah, that's just how he's credited, he's unaware whether to believe Woman's claims that he's her husband. Once at the family home and left alone, Man discovers a dead body in the basement, who Woman says was her first husband, before swiftly knocking out and then drugging Man. Sorry for all of these names, I hope you can follow along relatively smoothly. So, tied up and delivered shock treatment to, Man is then berated by woman and told that he must father her a child in order for this whole experience to end. Along the way, a postman ends up dead, as does a cop, and Man eventually finds young Audrey locked up in a cage. Woman claims that this is the couple's daughter, but that doesn't stop her from planning to drown the child later on. After some more shenanigans, and after Man allows Audrey to escape, he then collapses and reawakens in a bed back in hospital. There, after being interrogated by the police, Man has the realisation that he and Woman actually kidnapped Audrey in the hopes of demanding a ransom that they then used to pay for fertility treatments. Number 7. Frank, The Amityville Curse the fifth film in the Amityville franchise, The Amityville Curse, is a weird, weird film from a weird, weird series. While plentiful other movies with the Amityville name have featured strange goings-on, what makes The Amityville Curse stand out is that it has pretty much zero links to the films that preceded it. Not just that, but this 1990 effort, while taking place in the town of Amityville, New York, is based around a house that is totally not the famed Amityville house that the franchise is actually known for. It's confusing, right? I mean, sure, some of the other films in this franchise take place away from said abode, but they at least feature some items from the original house. This one, not so much, though. Anyway, to get to it, the unknowing killer of the Amityville curse is Frank, a priest sons of anarchy, Kim Coates. As the film opens, Frank and his wife buy an old clergy house and invite three of their pals out to help renovate the home when spooky stuff starts to happen and dead bodies start to pile up. 
The person behind these murders, though, is revealed to be Frank himself, with him being possessed by the spirit of an illegitimate son of a priest. All of this happens to Frank because his basement has been used to store a confessional booth where the jilted son had previously shot and killed his own father. Number 6. Tara Shrooms in Irish set slasher, 2007 Shrooms sees a group of friends tormented and brutalised by something during a camping trip in the woods. Having taken some trippy mushrooms that grow in these woods, the pals aren't sure whether they're really being stalked by a mysterious killer or whether it's merely part of a hallucination caused by the shrooms. In Tara though, we have a character whose mushroom experience actually gives her the power of premonition. Unfortunately for her, those premonitions revolve around Tara being able to see the impending deaths of her friends, and often not being able to do anything about it. However, by the time the paramedics arrive on the scene at Shrooms' claws, it's shown how Tara has in fact been the one committing all of the murders seen throughout the film. Rather than the urban legends rumoured to have once stalked the woods and nearby buildings, these acts were actually carried out by a Tara who'd had her mind altered by the eerily named Death Bell Mushroom. Number 5. Mort Rainey Secret Window after a particularly rough divorce, Johnny Depp's writer Mort makes the call to head out to a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Deciding to use his angst to pen a new novel, Mort intends to create his masterpiece. That is, until he runs into a strange little fella named Shooter. Not only does Shooter start to stalk and harass Mort, he's seen forever upping the ante, first stealing Mort's draft work, then killing his dog, and then deciding to burn down the house of Mort's ex-wife. Amy. So, when a rightfully miffed Amy and her new lover Tom end up at Mort's secluded cabin to confront him about what the hell has gone on, things take a further turn for the worse. As it's here when we get the big reveal that Mort actually is Shooter. Like a couple of other characters on this list, Mort has created Shooter as a split personality in order to help him deal with the emotions that he's feeling. Killing Amy and Tom and burying their bodies in the garden, the penny drops that the Shooter name was actually a play on the words Shoot. Uh, that is 100% serious, I didn't make that up. Shooter stands for shoot her. Who wrote this? <laughs> Number 4, Wallace, Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Granted, nobody is murdered in Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, but countless vegetables were slaughtered in the process of making this movie. A very family-friendly horror offering, this 2005 feature-length outing for Wallace and Gromit sees Tottington Hall's annual giant vegetable competition left in tatters after a giant bunny keeps destroying the town's crops. The audience finds out relatively early on that Wallace is indeed the Were-Rabbit creature responsible for destroying all of the local veggies, but the character himself doesn't actually find out until way later on in the film. Even then, he doesn't believe that he and the were-rabbit are one and the same, until trusty pal Gromit shows him all of the evidence. From there, Wallace has to evade the pitchfork-wielding villagers, all the whilst trying to cure his own eerie condition. And how does said condition finally get resolved? Well, it takes a sniff of stinking bishop cheese to undo the were-rabbit curse that had been placed on Wallace. Despite obviously not being a full-on terror fest, the curse of the were-rabbit is still all kinds of fun, with this silver screen venture for Wallace and Gromit even managing to take home the best animated feature film at the 2006 Academy Awards. Number 3, Tom Hannigan, My Bloody Valentine 3D. While 1981's My Bloody Valentine ends somewhat ambiguously, the 2009 remake has a slightly different finale. In the redo, Jensen Ackles plays Tom Hannigan, one of the standard pretty young things of this slasher who find themselves targeted by a murderous miner. Now, Tom is the son of a miner who died in a mine explosion that Ackles' character was blamed for. The sole survivor of this incident, Harry Warden, awakens from a coma one year later and kills several people before putting Tom in his crosshairs. Warden is stopped from killing Tom, but he then vanishes into the mine as Hannigan is left traumatised. After establishing this, My Bloody Valentine 3D jumps ahead 10 years to find Tom returning to his hometown. And wouldn't you know it, coincidentally, an eerie miner resurfaces at the exact same time to start killing off the townsfolk. What's a little unique about My Bloody Valentine 3D though, is that it positions Tom as the prime suspect when it comes to who exactly the masked miner is. He's accused of being this eerie figure by several people, and the film itself leans into the notion that he could be the miner. Still, the person most shocked by the final act revelation that Tom is indeed the miner is Tom himself. Number 2. Jess Triangle 
Upon a first watch, it's pretty darn tough to be fully aware of what you've just watched from Triangle. But with subsequent viewings, you realize that this 2009 Christopher Smith picture is an extremely clever thriller that was designed to reward repeat viewings. Starring Melissa George as Jess, the single mother of an artistic son, Triangle finds George's character and some friends stranded in the middle of a storm-swept ocean. Taking some solace on an abandoned liner, the group end up stalked by a burlap sack of figure with bloody intentions. The initial major reveal of this timey-wimey effort is that Jess is the masked killer. Well, at least a variation of the murderer. For the killer is an alternate version of Jess, a version who informs her that the only way to escape the ship is to kill all of those on it. Once everyone is dead, the day restarts as Jess finds herself stuck in a time loop. After a couple of times replaying the day, she realizes that she'd spent the morning verbally abusing her son, and the youngster then ends up dead after Jess crashes her car into an oncoming truck. Number 1. Kim, Jeff and Steven, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 Released a year after its game-changing predecessor, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, was always going to be labelled a hollow shell of that first movie, despite genuinely trying to do something different. See, Book of Shadows picks up a year after the Blair Witch Project had been released, with our protagonists a group of characters fascinated by that real movie and the legend of the Blair Witch. Yes, this establishes that the first film was entirely fictional and was released in the world of this sequel. As such, these new characters take a trip out to Black Hills to explore the area where the first film was shot, which of course leads to their own spooky encounters. What starts as a group of five curious Blair Witch enthusiasts then ends up with two of them dead and the other three being responsible for carrying out these murders and several others. Granted, the three in question, Kim, Jeff and Steven, aren't actually aware that they partook in these atrocities until a convenient final act reveal via CCTV footage bears all, with them having been possessed to carry out these heinous deeds. So that's our list. Once you guys think down in the comments below, what do you think about these killer reveals? And are there any cool ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more videos like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.